Okay, so now we're inside of the handle event form step three, but we need to do something a little bit different in here to the others because it's the final step. So first off, we'll return um, a redirect, uh, but we don't have the ID for the event yet. So, because we're going to show the event at the end of this, right? So we need to first handle this data. So first of all, we need to get the um, event uh, detail, oh, no, details DTO. Okay, and we can say this request stack get session get, and you may have already guessed what we're going to do here, is get the form step one. And we can tell PHPStorm that this is an object and it's an event uh, details object, like so. Ooh, no, not this. Uh, this. There we go. And we can do the same for the next one. So remember that we're event uh, location event location DTO like so, and it's step two like that. So remember that we're in the third step here. So um, the actual data available uh, on the third step is is in this form. So we can say get data like that, right? Um, so we don't actually need to store it in the session. We could if we wanted to, but it'd kind of be redundant because we're going to use it straight away. Now we need to create um, an event object from these DTOs, right? From all of the objects that we've created. So first off, we need to go into our factory. As you can see, we have an event factory, but there's nothing in it. So now we need to create a new public function and we'll call it create from, ooh, from DTOs. Ooh. And this will accept, um, first off, it'll accept the user, let's say, and we'll call that the owner. Then, oh, we need to import it. And then it will accept an event details DTO. Ooh, event details DTO. An event location DTO. And location DTO. And an event invitations DTO. Ooh, like so. And then we're going to say event equals new event, like so. So now we need to figure out how we can use this data from the events um, DTO. So we're going to have to loop over for each uh, participant as participant. But it's not actually a participant at the moment, it's technically a user. So the naming there is a little bit, yeah, it's okay, but it could be better. We could improve it. We could just call them users, but we're not, we can just gloss over that for now. Um, and so now inside of here, we're going to create a new participant, event participant, event participant, like that, event participant. Uh, but we need new, like so. So now we can pass in the event and the target, which is this user, and then the owner, which is the owner up here. So the target is the person who's being invited, and then the owner is the person who's invited them. And then the type, which I think already has a default um, setting, so we don't need to pass that in. We can just sort the arguments and that's it. And now what we can do is we can say, uh, ooh, uh, up there. Ugh. we can say event, add event participant, and then pass in the participant. And there we go. So now we can return the event, like so. And we can add the return type event. So back into our event controller, we can, uh, and in the step three 
handle form method, um, we can now use the event. We can now use the event factory that we just updated. So the this event factory create from DTOs and the owner is ah, as you see we don't have the owner in here so we need to uh, take it from there pass it in and then accept a user like so and then pass in that user to the create DTOs method and now uh, in here we want to add in the objects that um, that we have so the events um, and then next the location and then lastly the current one which is in this form um, the data for the invitations and this will now return an event event like so and let's now we can persist this so we could say event repository save event true and now we can finally finish this off by saying get ID excellent so now we need to create the views because we don't actually have any this isn't returning anything yet right so we need to go back up to our create method we're going to return a render method and inside of here though we're going to have a sprint sprint f method function um, and inside of here we're going to say events create dash percent sign s dot um, create let's put step actually step dash html dot twig like so and then inside of here we can pass in the form form and then we can also pass in the data in case we need it so uh, form data like so and there we go um, now the last thing we need to do, do before this will actually work is create the views um, or the templates whichever one you want to call them um, so if we go down to our event and we created this event oh sorry event not events create so we'll actually put that in a separate folder like so um, so we'll create a new folder just so we have you know it's separate it's nice and neat tidy um, so now we need to create inside of there the step um, details oops details html dot twig um, and then the next one is the event oh sorry step location dot html dot twig and then finally step invitations dot html dot twig like so now we need to populate this with the form details and I'm sure you can um, create a form yourself um, it's pretty straightforward each one is relevant to the DTO um, that we in the form itself okay so now we're done with um, creating and adding in the forms um, as you can see here we have a um, a back button which is just passing in the uh, step that we want to go to and then we have the submit button which will submit the form and then the form will redirect us to the next step so once we are finished with the data we can then reset it so here we can say this uh, 
um, this request stack get session get and then we can get each one of the things we've saved or rather we want to set it sorry and we can set it to null and same for the step two and that's it so now we can see the form is rendering correctly if we now add in a title uh, let's say uh, radio party and we can then add a date let's say the 21st and we'll just change the time to 539 next there we go we're loading the next page and if we click back we can go back to the last thing and the data is populated in our form and we can go next um, let's say here there and everywhere Batman and then just fill in some dummy data for the longitude and latitude next and to the event invitations uh, we will invite Harry Potter definitely James May and whoever Tom Lowe is uh, you know what we don't want to invite Sarah or actually no let's not invite Tom we'll invite Sarah um, because this is really important um, and then we can create the event and there we go we have a radio party and we're also inviting some people um, if we go into the database we can see that there is a radio party record and it has all of the data that we added and that's it that is how we can create a multi part form in Symfony 7 without any JavaScript. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my book. Use the QR code to find it. Have a good day.